Let's face it, corned beef isn't the prettiest meat in the world, and now we finally know why. Canned corned beef may not be as illustrious or as popular as burger patties or bacon, but it has its place in history. Corned beef, or salted beef as it was known in the era of its conception, has travelled many circuits of human endeavour. Take back your tuna meatloaf and cheese, it's Mary Kitchen has please. At first, corned beef was considered a delicacy fit for the royal palates. In the 16th century, Ireland became a major hub of cattle husbandry thanks to the English appetite for beef. Unfortunately, due to an anti-Irish cattle lobby in Northern England, the Cattle Acts were passed, prohibiting the export of live cattle to England. This threatened to create a glut in the Irish cattle market, so the country's farmers found a loophole. They exported the four-legged commodities in inanimate form, most likely cured with brine in barrels. By 1668, only a year after the prohibitive 1667 Cattle Act, the Cork region was pushing out 16,960 barrels of corned beef every year. During this century, the first wave of Irish immigrants crossed the Atlantic for America with their knowledge of curing beef. It was during this period that the British named this dominant form of beef preservation Corning. Favoured for its longevity and ability to hold at sea, the now newly named corned beef gained traction during the wars of the 1800s. Demand was so strong, in fact, that the French were permitted passage into Irish ports despite its war with England. Canned corned beef was mass-produced for the first time in 1811 by British industrialist and papermaker Brian Donkin. The packaging method allowed the product to last longer and travel further, and it was barely 40 years later when Donkin's company started selling canned corned beef to the public. Of course, it's common knowledge that there is no corn in corned beef, so why is it called that? When the British named this food in the 17th century, corn-sized granules of potassium nitrate, or saltpetre, were used to salt the beef. This compound helped keep the meat from decaying while maintaining its appealing pinkish colour. Today, the corning process remains mostly the same. The meat is brined on low heat with spices and flavours at the discretion of the maker. The differences between uncanned and deli variations of corned beef are easily detectable. Firstly, they're available in two main brisket cuts. The point cut, which makes for fattier slices of meat as it comes from the part of the brisket that has more marbling. And the flat cut, which is much leaner. Unlike store-bought canned corned beef, the fattier parts of deli variants are easily removed, should one intend to minimise fat content. Another aspect that differs among the variations of corned beef is colour. Some batches have a dull greyish tone, especially in the deli variants, while others have more vibrant pink hues. The pinkish colour, which is prevalent in canned corned beef, is more appealing, but may be less healthy than the grey variant. This is because it contains sodium nitrate, which contributes to its sodium content and may raise blood pressure. Meanwhile, a 2021 study published in the European Journal of Public Health reported a link between sodium nitrite and a risk of contracting prostate cancer. Notably, modern-day canned corned beef comes from various unused cow parts that are not otherwise fit for sale. These cuts are slow-cooked in a saline solution, ground and mixed with those nitrates. Because the ground corned beef is canned while hot in order to prevent bacterial growth, any fat content becomes liquid and, as the meat cools, the fat solidifies. And that is what the white stuff in canned corned beef is. 